right. Uh, we're going to go over the database example we uh, we we went we did as a, a class thing last uh, last um, class. And in doing it, there's a couple things I want to point out. First of all, is less important. How do I? I don't want to say less important, but keep in mind that when we're covering this, it's not just about figuring out this particular problem, right? Um, it's not that like, oh, okay, now if anyone asks you to do a website with polls, you know how to design a database, all right? So I want you to understand the problem, but I want you to sort of extend it. And I'm going to sort of use this uh, as, as an instance of reviewing rather than giving like the kind of lecture I might give in a 143 class where I would say, what is a database, what is a table, and all that. So I aim to review those things. So sort of think beyond the particular problem to... More, more general terms. The second thing I would say is, um, even if you think you got this down really solid, believe me, and this is, this is honest, all right, there have been so many things that I have learned about fill in the blanks, database design, web design, HTML design, object-oriented programming, Java, fill in the blank almost any technical topic. There's so many things I've learned after I already thought I knew it. <laughs> All right? <laughs> so, it, and it's not even a matter of like learning like, oh, I didn't know there was the such and such tag in HTML. So it's not like a matter of just like learning a new fact or something that maybe you missed. But you gain a deeper understanding, you know. I hear a lot of students say, um, in all my classes, depending on the topic, that they can understand what's in the book, that they can understand the lectures, but then they have difficulty when they try to do the assignment or try to do it on their own. And that's understandable. That's a level of knowledge. To understand when someone talks about it, that's a level of knowledge. It would be like me if someone was trying to show me a golf stroke. I can understand that, you know, you have to stand a certain way and hold your grip a certain way and do whatever it is you do. All right, I'm a lousy golfer, so maybe that's a bad example. All right, but I can understand that, but to be able to take it and apply it, that's like a higher level. All right, that's bumping it up higher level, and I don't want to know what you said back then. <laughs> Actually, I do, but we can get that by later. Um, uh, so, so again, so that's like a higher level of understanding. So even if you think you have this down, bear with me, and let's let's see if we can try to bring your understanding to a little bit deeper level. Okay, we are going to take a top-down approach, which means we're going to look at the big picture and narrow it down. So our task will more or less be this. And it's kind of going to be in this order, but, you know, nothing's ever that easy, right? So, we're going to be looking to identify entities. We're going to be looking for, uh, to identify relationships. Then we're going to look to identify and place, for lack of a better word, attributes. I'm going to change the word place to associate. With the proper entity. That's all you got to do, right? You got your database. Well, that's just like saying you got to take your hand, and, you know, and swing the golf club and all that. You know, easier said than done. Now, I'm going to write some of the observations on the board about. Um, I'm not going to redraw those diagrams. I'm going to write some observations. I'm going to take those diagrams or those drawings of of the screens that we had last time, and I'm going to sort of boil them down into sentences. All right. Which would be kind of what I would do if I was doing, if, I, if someone gave me those, I would kind of go and do that and make those observations. All right, so observation number one. Have to be a logged on user to vote in a poll. Number two, 
each poll is just one question. Each poll is associated with one category. Uh, user can only vote once per poll. The last one was, oh, user can comment on a poll multiple times. Is there anything important from our database example last time that I omitted? This is what I remember is sort of the important stuff. I thought that there is more than one question for each poll. Each category. Each category, but not each poll. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, as we scan through these, all right, we're going to be looking to identify entities, identify relationships, identify and associate attributes with proper entity. Now, to be sure, I didn't give tons of detail. So this one, we will probably have to sort of just use some common sense to flesh out the details. Like, you know, like when you enter a comment, what do you enter in? Do you just enter in a text comment? Can you give your comment a title? You know, whatever. We'll, 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 we'll make something up when we get to that point. Because really, being a top-down sort of person, I'm interested really in the higher level stuff. And we'll, we'll flesh out the details as we can. So let's keep these things in, in mind. And I could address these in any, any order, really. You know, you're going to end up at the same place. There's sort of a logical, reasonable order. I'm actually going to start with point number three. Each poll is associated with one category. All right? And I'm going to look, and I'm doing this deliberately. What can we glean from this statement? Each poll is associated with one category. We have entities, we have relationships, we have attributes. What do we have? Yes? Also, well, I thought you were asking for more. I was going to say there's this one to many. Okay. You're right. Yeah. But, 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 but we don't even know what there's one to many of yet. All right? Because our board is blank for our ERD diagram. Yeah. All right. So you probably need a category entity. Okay. Category entity? And what else? Yeah, a poll, a poll entity or a question. Right. Yeah. All right. And you associate, you said that there is a one-to-many relationship going which way? One poll can have how many categories? Several. No, sorry. No, one poll can have how many categories? One. Someone help her out. She shouldn't do all the work. All right. One category can have how many polls? Many. Many. That's not explicitly stated, but you know, we, can, we can almost assume that. And if you had any, any doubt about that, you could always ask the person. Um, that's the case. Now, this is correct, and I'm buying this, all right? But I got to ask the question, because this is a question I get a lot in the 143 class, and maybe it's on some of your minds. Why could I, what, what is wrong with doing this? I could have a poll table that had attributes and had, instead of another entity that the poll was linked to, I could have simply a category text attribute. So I could type in the category for each poll. You wouldn't be able to add easily. You wouldn't be able to add what easily? Changing any changes, additional questions, additional 
Well, I disagree. If I have a new question, I just type it in here and type in the category for it. It's say, actually easier. But say you want to break down your history category into U.S. history or Canadian history. Well, then I go in and I type U.S. history for some questions, Canadian history for others. But if you have it in a separate and identify it only by uh, an ID, uh -huh. you can change the name in the category and it'll change it for all those questions once. Okay. So one, so one reason why this isn't good is let's say I change the, the title of a category. All right. So, for example, I have a bunch of questions about um, baseball. Then I realize, hmm, these are really, a better category would be Major League Baseball. So, if I did it this way, I'd have to go in and find every single one of them that had a category of baseball and change it to Major League Baseball. Whereas if I did it this way, I'd simply change the category title in one place and everyone would get to change it. So yes, that's a good reason. What's another reason for doing this? Well, it's all the like, misspelling issues. Ah, exactly. Lends itself to misspelling uh, issues. So for example, let's say I enter in a poll question today for technology. All right? I go in and enter a, a poll question tomorrow, and I don't type in the word technology, but I type, type the word tech, just, you know, or the abbreviation tech, T-E-C. CH. And the next day, I am, you know, I didn't get much sleep, so I type in technology with two G's. Or I, I hit the wrong key on the keyboard, I mistype it or whatever. All right? If I did it this way, there would be no way to constrain that category to a list of the categories that are valid. All right? So, what we're going to do here is we're going to define what's called a foreign key. And we'll talk in more detail about a foreign key in a minute. But the purpose of the foreign key is we won't be able to put a category on this poll that doesn't have a valid category in this table. So if there are three choices in the category table, technology, sports, and politics, Every poll we add has to have one of those three categories, and we can't enter it in without another category, you know, you know, without entering in another category first, all right, if we wanted a different sort of category. That's why I said in this, one, in this, in this case, this is actually easier to enter, right? Because I can enter in anything I want to for category. So if I want a new category, I don't have to do anything. I just start entering questions for it. But the problem is, is with spelling and with you know, uh, consistency and all that, I might want to constrain the category in the poll with a list of valid categories. So that's sort of my first um, observation about this, is that sometimes there is something that you could think of and you could say, well, it could be an attribute. I'm not saying it's a good idea, I'm saying it could be an attribute. The question is, though, when you're identifying if it's going to be an attribute or another entity with a relationship, you ask yourself the question, number one, are there more, multiple attributes associated with that thing? Like, for example, in a minute we're going to be discussing users. Well, you can imagine when we talk about a user, there might be multiple attributes associated with the user. So as soon as you see multiple attributes, bam, that's an entity. Right? So we're not just going to store the user name on their votes. All right? For a user, we probably want to know their email address, their first name, their last name, and maybe some other information. So first thing to do is look to say, are there multiple attributes associated with that thing, which I'm considering whether it itself is an attribute or an entity. The other thing is constraints. Do we want to constrain based on that. And in this case, yeah, we typically want to constrain because we want to make sure that there's only a list of valid categories. All right? So in other words, imagine if we didn't do this. Um, the drop-down then might have a category for arts, a category for entertainment, and a category for arts and entertainment. It's going to make people have a much harder time finding uh, the stuff that they're interested in and the polls that they're interested in. 
if instead we constrain that, all right, then we're not going to run into that problem because we can only have the categories that um, that we've designated as valid categories. Now, in some cases, it could go the opposite way. All right, I'm trying to think of a case where we might want to go the opposite way. Hair color, maybe. I don't know. You know, people have a variety of different hair colors, right? I mean, you know, walk around campus. You know, you will on occasion see people with, with green hair. Not too many, but there's a few. You'll see people that have blonde hair with black just on the tips. All right. I briefly considered that style, but I decided not to. All right. You'll see people who have brown hair with some gray mixed in it. You'll see people with gray hair with some brown mixed in it. All right. So you'll see a range of things. And in that case, depending on our application, I'm not sure it would be important enough to constrain that, to write a list of these are the valid hair colors, and you must pick one from that list. And there's not really a lot of things associated with hair color. So therefore, in that case, I might just say, well, yeah, just make it an attribute and just let people type in what they want to. Um, you'd lose a, the, the possibility of consistency, but it would be more descriptive, all right? And you wouldn't have to, like, narrowly put, you could, you could put in exactly what you wanted to for each person. You will have to define a category. Again, that's an example that, um, um, you know, assumes that I didn't really care and I wasn't going to, you know, look for everyone that has brown hair and send them a coupon for some kind of hair dye or something like that, all right? On the other hand, if I was doing colors for cars, Cars, typically, there are standard colors per manufacturer. So I might want to have a table for that and constrain it. Okay. Anyhow, I think we've, we've covered this topic. So, we said there is a one-to-many relationship between that. And, what they, and this is called the cardinality of the relationship. And, and I draw it this way. Other people, you see, draw it this way. And there's all kinds of little things that you can squig, you know, all kinds of little extra designations that you can put that indicate whether it's optional or not. For example, it might be that a question can only have one category, but a question doesn't have to have any categories. It could be. That's not the case in our example. The category is required in our example. But in a different, you know, in a different um, scenario, um, it could be, you know, if you're doing a database of people and you had a, 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 a field for spouse, all right, well, a person may not have a spouse, but if they do have a spouse, there's only going to be one, all right? As such, <clears throat> then that would be a case of an optional relationship where you don't have to have it. If you do have it, though, there's only one. This, however, is required. And again, I don't obsess necessarily about the little extra markings. I think the most important thing is to get the cardinality right. And one thing that to do when you're doing the cardinality is to remember that you need to go in both directions. That is, you have to look and say, one of these can have how many of these? And one of these can have many of these. So we got the crow's feet over there. One of these can have how many of these? Well, it can only have one. So it's a one-to-many relationship. I'm not sure in this example if we have any many-to-many relationships. We'll have to see. But generally, your relationships are one-to-many or many-to-many. Rarely, you come up with a one-to-one -one relationship. It's almost hard to think of examples, real-world examples. Like you might think between... Um, you know, anytime you think of that, you think, well, no, wait a minute, you know. Between, say, an employee and their automobile, like here they keep track of our cars, like for parking 
tickets. You might say, well, that's a one-to-one -one relationship. Well, not really. Someone could, you know, there's some people that have more than one car. And, you know, I, you know, when my car broke down, I took my daughter's car in one day. So it would be good to have actually both of those associated with me so they knew that that Chevy Tracker sitting in the very prestigious uh, faculty parking space actually belonged there. All right. Um, the one thing I could think of is like between, uh, let's say, an academic division and a dean. All right. Each academic division only has one dean. All right. And near as I know, no co-deans. Um, I think that's against policy. There, there's always one dean. <laughs> By the same token, no dean is the dean of multiple divisions. So in other words, the business division, Dr. Young, is only the dean of the business division. He's not allowed to be also at the same time the dean of engineering or whatever. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship between those two entities. One-to-one -one relationships are fairly rare. And, and if, you, if you think you got one, think twice about it to be real sure that it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Because a lot of times when it's a one-to-one -one relationship, really, you're just talking about the same table that you gave two different names to. All right? Or it's really a one-to-many and you just didn't think through it enough. So I'm not saying they're impossible, but we're not going to focus on them. All right. Let's start laying some attributes down here. All right? A poll. What would some attributes in the poll table be? Well, let's, let's do it this way first. What's going to be in the category table? Categories. <laughs> He's so proud. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, okay. You know, you know it, it, it reminds me of the old joke. Uh, there is a guy and I was flying a helicopter, all right? And the wind was blowing him, and he blew him all over the place, and it was stormy, and he had no idea where he was. So he landed his helicopter, and he comes across the guy. Um, well, actually, he, he stayed in the helicopter. He landed the helicopter, but still sitting in it. And the guy comes up to, to see if he's okay. And the guy in the helicopter looks and says, where am I? And the guy says, you're in a helicopter. All right? <laughs> so the helicopter pilot stops and looks and says, ah, I know where I am. I'm in Redmond, Washington, all right, where Microsoft headquarters is, because I got an answer that was technically correct, but completely not meaningful, all right? <laughs> so yes, there will be categories in the category table. Let me read. Phrase the question. <laughs> what specific attributes are we going to store about a cat, uh, category? Category ID. Category ID. And what else? The name of the category. And the category name. Why do we need both? Well, let's, let's hold on to that thought. Well, I'm going to ask a question in a minute why we, we need both. All right. What's special about the category ID? What's a special name for this sort of column? Primary, primary key. key. All right. And a primary key, what does that mean? It's a unique identifier. It's a unique identifier. Unique means only one. <clears throat> only one. Only one. All right. All right. The second part of the definition of a primary key is that every row has to have one. All right? Think of like student ID here at LC. You know, every student has a student ID. You simply can't be a student here if you don't have a student ID. And also, every student ID is unique. All right? So that's a primary key. What type of data is that going to be? Probably numeric. Probably numeric. Category name, of course, will be text. All right. What's going to be in the poll table? Now, oh, before I ask that, let me rephrase the question. <laughs> You're slowing down, man. <laughs> what are the attributes that 
would be in the poll table. Uh, category ID, foreign key. Okay, there'll be a category ID. That's a foreign key, and we'll talk about that in a second. Category ID. All right, what else? Uh, poll, uh, primary key. A poll ID, primary key. And what else? Yeah, actually the poll question. That'd be a text field. Now we identified this as a foreign key. Foreign keys have to be the same type as their corresponding primary key. Foreign keys effectively point to the primary key. Alright? Is the way we accomplish a relationship. And with one to many relationships, the foreign keys always work this way. Always. This is this is great because, you know, come to my classes, watch the videos on YouTube. How often do I use the word always? Not very often. Always the primary uh, the there, there is a field, there's an attribute in the many side of a one to many relationship that points to the primary key of the one side of that relationship. If you think about that, that's easy. In this classroom, there is a one-to-many relationship between teacher and student. All right? Could I point to my students? No. I can't point to all of them at once. All right? However, can each of you point to me? Yes. So it's clear that the many can point to the one. The one can't possibly point to the many with just one finger. All right? All right. So I, I thought that would get a chuckle in some from someone, but we're, we're, we're being professional here. So good. All right. So this is what we're going to have for these two tables. We have a poll ID, which is numeric. This which is text, this is which is numeric, and this is a foreign key to that. All right. Question, why do I need a category ID? Why not just make the category name a primary key? Because I'm not going to have two categories with the same name, right? I'm not going to have a category of technology and a second category of technology. It's very confusing. Why do I need then this category ID? And then I could just put the category name in here as a foreign key. Why, why did we put in the category ID? When you do a query, oh, this is what I'm thinking. When you do a query, you're going to want to be able to point to it like exactly. Okay, but I could do that with the name, right? If, if I guaranteed that every category had a unique name, I could point to the precise category using the name. There'd be only one technology category, there'd only be one sports category, one politics category, and so on. The only thing I can think is it gives you a, a format, sort of like, say, you make the category ID a six-digit number. Uh -huh. For your queries, you know you have to have a six-digit number instead of exactly typing the name of the category. Okay, that's, that, that is, that's a true statement. It's nice when you do things in a consistent manner. And therefore, if I make the primary key always look the same, I can do some neat stuff coding-wise, because I know the primary key is going to look that way. That's kind of a bonus, though. That's kind of a secondary question. Why use a category ID instead of a category name? Exactly. Numbers can be typically stored more efficiently than text can. So therefore, if I thought of category name, how big would I make it? Uh, 12 characters, 16 characters, I don't know, 20 characters. Wouldn't want too short, otherwise it would be meaningless. Keep in mind that when you define something as a key, it's stored in the database in a few different 